where I now have the Canon TTY plugged in via USB into my Mac. We have launched the EOS utility, and that's the software that came with the Mac. In here, you can control everything about the camera. Right now, I have it in live view, and you can, that's why you can see the camera. I can move the camera on the tripod here and shake it a little bit. I can control the shutter speed, the f-stop, the ISO, everything I want to control from the computer now. So what I'm using the computer as is an volumeter. So now I can tell the computer how to set up the shot, what time, how often to take a photo, where to put it, things like that. Important thing to notice up here is that we have the photos continuously shooting mode. So that means it'll take a photo after a photo after a photo. So that's what we need to be in in order to do time elapse. So I want to pick a folder where I want to put this. I'll just put it on my desktop for now. So I'll go to desktop, I'll make a new folder. I'll call it sky. And I'll open that up and I'll press OK. So now I'm actually going to close the live view mode because I have the shot set up the way I want it to be. And now you'll see that this little stopwatch appears. I'm going to click the stopwatch and here's where I can the timer shooting uh, settings. So I can have a delay of five seconds if I want. But really the important thing is the interval timer. So right now I have it set shooting interval is 10. So that means every 10 seconds it will take a photo. So let's actually, could make that 15 seconds. It's not a lot is going on right now in the sky, but I'll leave it at 10. And then here's shots. How many shots will it take? So I set this to 1,000. So just in case I want to leave it, I can have 1,000 shots. And then exposure time, not going to really worry about. Delay setting, not really worrying about it. Um, and here we go. Over here it says time until next shot. It gives you a countdown timer. It tells you number of shots already taken. Soon it will show you a quick preview of what the shot looks like. Number of failed shots, then number of shots to be taken. So it'll show how many are left. So we can see here it's taken two shots and it shows you the shots here in the preview. And you can see it slowly builds up here in the Digital Photo Professional that came with the software as well. Okay, so I won't have you sit through this, but I'll take a, a few hundred shots and then I'll come back. You can see here shots taken 449. We're going to stop at 450. I did set it for 1,000, but that's a little too many. Shots taken 450. Now I'm going to hit stop. You can see here, sorry, you hear my dog whining in the background. So we can see here that we have lots and lots of photos. So what we're going to do now is turn those into a movie. I'm going to close this. I'm going to close out of our Rebel utility. Over here in the sky, we have all of our photos. So I'm going to launch QuickTime Player 7. File, open image sequence. And then we're going to find our photos. Select the first one. We're going to shift click on the last one. We're going to choose 24 frames per second. And here they all are, but it's full frame. So we're going to have to go to fit the screen and back in Final Cut and I'm going to import what I've exported from QuickTime Movie. File import files. I have it inside my time lapse file, my sky. I have a 5K sky and a 720p sky. You can see here's the 720p version. 
looks pretty cool but I shot and I had the camera in autofocus unfortunately so you can see that the camera jumps in and out a little bit as the sky moves around not the best but it's still a pretty cool effect next we have the 5k version you can't actually tell until put on the timeline that it's really a 5k version if my computer will even load it but for now we're going to drag the 720p version down to the timeline I'm going to say yes to this and there we go and then I'm going to drag the 5k version down next to it The, the 5k version is a lot bigger you should remember we go into the motion tab here and we see that the scale is on 20 if I was to put the scale at 100% you'd see how much zoomed in we really are so we have a lot of information to work with here if I scale back out So that's the basis of how to do it. Set up your computer to take the photos and tell what you want it to do as your involometer. Then go through the process of the QuickTime movie, making it into a movie. Bring it into Final Cut Pro. You can then add text to your movie, text at the end of it, export it any way you want to export it. And there you go. Good luck and tune in next time for more videos.